Welcome back to Shadow Moon. Today we are working on Brig for Season 2. This is the butted plate with the heavy, heavy leather backing. So I'm going to show you guys how to make these into proper armor. Now the job is pretty simple. What we're going to have to do is get some male female rivets and stick the plates on like that. But we're going to have to do some measuring and some cutting. This panel here is way too large for what we're going to get out of these nine plates here. So, what we're going to have to do is measure out the width of each plate, the spaces between, the border we're going to leave on, and the rest of it we're going to cut off. Okay, so we have our piece of leather here, and there's a couple of things we're going to be doing on our measurements. What we're going to be doing for our test is to leave a quarter inch all the way around the plates, so we can actually see where the leather is and attach it to our test medium. So we're going to start at a quarter inch, and we know that each of these plates is two by three. So three inches wide means that we're going to stop at three and a quarter, and we're going to pick it up again at three and three eighths. And then we're going to move another three inches down to six and three eighths to six and a half. The eighth inch we're giving is just enough to allow for movement. Uh, if you put all these plates right next to each other, there's going to be no give, and you will not be able to bend over wearing this arm. So, once again, we go from six and three eighths. We're going to jump all the way up to nine and three eighths. Sorry, that should be uh, six and three eighths to six and a half. Six and a half to nine and a half. And then we're going to go to nine and three quarters, where we're going to end our piece. Now, if you notice, I am actually drawing on the face of the leather. Um, if you want, if you're looking for a really high quality armor, don't use the face of the leather. Use the back here, where you can see all the all the scraping went on when they originally treated this. So, this is scar on the animal. We're going to cut most of this off, and it'll be hidden on the final product. So. We're going to do the exact same thing going up the side, starting at a quarter inch, and go to two and a quarter, two and three eighths, on and on. Now we're going to get to the end here. We're going to be at six and three quarter uh, when we do our final uh, cutoff. So we're going to wind up at about six and a half for the final piece, for the final metal plate, sorry. And I'm going to cut this, measure everything out, cut it away, and I'll show you what the final product on that looks like. Okay, so I've drawn all my lines, I've cut off all my excess, you can see the quarter inch that we're leaving just so we have something to mount to. Um, this here, uh, each of the lines there's the eighth inch gap that goes between. So when I take my plates, I'll be able to actually line them up with those lines and have the, that spacing between them for mobility. Now, as you can see, I've numbered the plates and each of these little squares. That's because the little dots in the corner are actually traced through the holes in the plates. Because the process isn't perfect in putting the holes in, some of them are off just a little bit. So what we want to do is punch our holes exactly where they are on the proper plate. Plate 1 and plate 9 have two very different hole patterns, so they're off by about a sixteenth of an inch, which will actually look a lot bigger when you have everything riveted together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take our leather punch. This here is a really simple leather punch. You can buy them in kits. Uh, I got about six different sizes here. Depending on the rivet you're using, you're going to want to change what punch you're, you're going to be picking. Right here, this is an aluminum pound rivet. We use them with steel washers. Those are for very flexing joints where you're going to have a lot of tension, like uh, articulations on leather or on steel. This gets cut off to a certain height and then the excess is pounded down. 
these washers help hold everything in place. We're not going to be using this here. Uh, not that they wouldn't work. It's more that the cost for these guys is a lot higher. What we're going to be using is this here male female rivet. You can get these from Tandy. They're pretty cheap. I think they come in a bag of fifty for five dollars. They're they're wonderful cost savings. Some rivet, some of these rivets don't have um, a notch three quarters of the way up the stem. Uh, those ones I don't recommend because if you have the notch, you can actually put them together, holds everything, and lets you test fit your pieces. So, with that in mind, got my two punches here. This one's for the aluminum rivets, this is for the male female. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to punch out some of these holes here, and we'll come back as soon as that's done. Okay, so I've got most of these holes knocked out on the top row. We're going to take this last one. It's that simple. Your punches should always be sharp. Make sure your ejection slot, everything keeps falling out. Otherwise they have a tendency to jam and that takes a fair bit of time to clean up. So it's easier to be proactive than reactive to this stuff. We've got this first row of holes ready to go. So we're going to take our plate, match it to the number, feed the stem of the rivet through the hole and the plate, and pop the cap on. We're going to do that for each of them, and then we're going to take them over to the anvil and pound them down. Okay, so. We have all of the plates attached to the leather backing. As you can see, like I said earlier, the rivets are holding just as a test fit. They have not been pounded as of yet. If they weren't sitting right, you can always just pull them apart. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers to give you a hand. Assembling these is pretty easy more time consuming and the repetition that uh, gets to you. So as you can see, we've got all of our plates lined up and you're going to want to be very careful that they don't shift while you're mounting. When you're actually pounding the rivets, you're going to be using one of these here. This here, uh, pound is very has a concave shape to the top. It's going to dome the rivet and prevent it from just flattening. If you just flatten the rivet, there's a risk the stem's not going to work properly and it's not going to lock together. So it's pretty simple. You line it up. Make sure your piece is sitting properly. And you're done. That panel there is now completely sealed down. And we're well on our way to creating another suit of brick. As soon as it's done, I'll show you guys the final piece. And there you go guys. It's one panel of brick for us to destroy later. Now, what I was saying about shifting earlier, you have to be careful, because sometimes it shifts just as you hit it. it causes you gaps. If I was going to do this for an actual suit of armor, I'd adjust that back, but I'm just going to be hitting this with an axe anyways. So, thank you very much, and have yourselves a great day.